Welcome to the Talent Optimization Podcast, the go-to podcast for CEOs and HR professionals wanting to bridge the gap between the strategy and tactical implementation of talent optimization within their organizations. Through interviews, predictive index, and personal experience, your host, Tracy Shirk, helps you discover the facets of talent optimization from both a CEO and HR perspective to truly create the dream team for your organization. Are you ready? Let's get started. Do no harm. This is the instruction that is given to business folks that are interviewing high school students inside of a mock interview program. And I start this podcast off today with this you know, really simple instruction. And to me, it's very surprising. When we do interviews, are we doing harm to the other person that we are talking with? So welcome to the Talent Optimization Podcast. My name is Tracy Shirk, and I'm the Chief Talent Officer here at Elevated Talent Consulting. And today we are talking about conducting the interview and what this actually looks like. And if you've been following us along on this higher series of really going through what does it look like to set up the interview, to do a job assessment, to do a job description, to do a job ad, to do all the things to get this perfect candidate in front of you, which we identified on the podcast last week, now we're actually doing the interview. Here's the deal. When we're conducting interviews, we are having a two-way conversation with another human. And so often, do we forget that we're talking with humans? And isn't it interesting that the note to business folks to interview inside of a high school mock interview program is do no harm, right? And here's what I think is so interesting about this when we conduct interviews is we are telling that individual, the culture of our organization by how we treat them, how we talk to them, how we interact with them, how long we make them wait, how we do all of those things. And so often I hear, but I'm just too busy, Tracy. We just, we, we, we can't. Interviews are just not necessarily as important because we're too busy. Well, my question is, do you have the people inside your organization that are doing the jobs that you need so that you're not so busy? Most often that answer is no. So we've got a too busy is perpetuating too busy, which is perpetuating a negative work environment. Just want you to think about that for a second before you conduct your next interview. So with that, I promise we're not going to be all doom and gloom. We're not going to do harm on our podcast today by being, you know, here's all the negative things to do. We're going to shift it. So conducting the interview, what are some of those key things that, that we want to cover and really dig into and look at. So when we conduct the interview, there are a couple key jobs that you as an interviewer have. And the first job is to know what your job is. As we've talked about up until this point on the podcast, when we bring a candidate in, we're looking at the whole candidate, right? Like we are taking a holistic approach, meaning we're looking at what are their natural behavioral styles as aligned to what the job needs. We're looking at what are their personal values as aligned to the organizational values. And we're looking at what are the skill sets that this individual has as aligned to what the jobs very, very specifically needs. So those are the key items that we are looking at when we are interviewing for an individual to come into the role. So what is your job as an interviewer? Well, it depends, right? If you are, let's say, an amazing rock star on the role, maybe your job is to look at the skill sets. If you are the manager, maybe you're looking at both the skill set and the behavioral um, styles of the individual to ensure that they are a fit. Of course, you've already looked at that beforehand with your with your assessments, such as the um, predictive index, um, and using that piece as you're planning those things out. So you know. Your job may be to interview for a cultural fit inside the organization. Your job may be to interview for a fit on the team that they will be joining to ensure that they are the individual that really can fill the gap and that you need so that you can execute at an incredibly high level inside of your organization. So these are all key items that we're specifically looking at as we're doing that interview. And so 
as we're conducting the interview, again, remember, this is a two-way conversation, and we want to ensure that this potential employee is, you know, asking questions, that they're interviewing you as much as you're interviewing them. How do you do that? You make them comfortable. You provide them the space to step into who they really are, right? Here's the deal. The interview is when we are on our best behavior. We want to make them comfortable enough to show us who they are in that interview versus, you know, being 100% on that best behavior because we want to know what we're going to get going forward. Um, The other thing that we really want to make sure of as we're conducting the interview is that we are not asking any questions that give us information about a protected class or that are illegal questions to ask based on the employment laws that are out there. Something to note is once you hear something, you can't unhear it, right? So the training that we do beforehand and those mock interviews, both mock interviews for our new interviewers, and again, like the, you know, the high school that I just came from before recording this podcast, you know, we're giving individuals an opportunity to try something out in a test environment before they do it in a real life scenario. So we do want to ensure that we are equipping our managers and our leaders to interview before they actually interview a candidate. Um, And so when we're conducting the interview, we want to make those candidates at ease. We want to provide them the space so that they can step into who they really are. And when we're conducting the interview, we should have very specific interview questions that we're asking. So we're somewhat following a script within this. But within that script, it's loose enough so that we can ask those follow-up questions, right? So let's say we ask a question that says, you know, hey, tell me about what you believe your career trajectory is in the next five years. And it's something completely different than the position they're hiring for. We can follow up and say, so help me understand, how does the career trajectory of where you want to go align with this position? And how do you see this position aligning with that career goal that you have? Um, Because that's going to give you some additional information or insight. Another interview question may be, tell me about a time when you supported a, a client of going all the way through the process with great communication. And what you want to hear within that question is you're specifically looking for their communication. You're looking for their ability to pay attention to detail and to hit deadlines. But you're also looking for what actions they took versus what actions another person on the team took. So with that being said, what you're listening for and and the follow-up questions that you ask will help you to get closer to what you're listening for if you haven't yet heard it. Um, so it's going to show you, yep, they they do meet this objective that we're looking for that is an essential duty of the job, or they don't, right? And either one of those are okay at this stage because the goal is that we're hiring the right fit to the role, that we're hiring an individual that is um, aligned with what the team needs in order to execute the strategy, that their personal values are aligned with what those business values are. And so When we're conducting the interview, we're noting where things are at. So we're typically creating a, we've got a scorecard that was created ahead of time that's aligning us into, hey, is this person a great fit for the role? This needs to be calibrated ahead of time. So um, if you are listening for their communication, do I have the same understanding of what great communication is as the other individuals on the on the interview team? And does that align to the same expectations that we are going to have on our performance evaluations that they will be evaluated on once they are in the position? So you notice we're tying a number of different dots together, and this is exactly what we do inside of our hire program when we talk about each of these objectives and our INSPIRE program when we align what we're doing in the hire process into what we do to inspire our people to perform. So, you know, with that, as we talk about conducting the interview, there's a couple different types of interviews that we may potentially conduct. So one of them is the the interview that really happens right at the onset when we're looking to get more information from that candidate. Typically, this is a phone interview that is done within human resources. 
The next would be, hey, they're coming into the office. We're doing a standard interview. We're, we're, we're chatting with these individuals. And that interview more than likely is going to do a deep dive into the skill sets that they have as it is matched to the position. Sometimes that's just the supervisor doing that interview. Another type of interview is a group interview where this might be that same group. If you think back to the job assessment um, podcast, this might be that same group that did the job assessment. So it could be that it is somebody that's great in their role. It could be HR. It could be um, the manager, right? In most organizations, you don't have the bandwidth to have that many people in on an interview. Um, but one of the things I want you to think about is you do want this individual to have an interview with the hiring manager, whoever is going to hire them into the role and make that job offer to them should be that person that is doing really that last interview. Um, the next interview is a skip level interview. A skip level interview is an interview with a manager above the individual that will be supervising this employee. In many of our organizations, the person doing the skip level interview, again, the manager above the supervisor, is that's actually the second interview that a candidate has. So they do a screening with human resources, and then they do an interview with a skip level manager. The skip level manager is going to weed out all of the candidates except for maybe the top two that they feel is a great fit for the role, then they're going to have the manager do the final interview because they're now okay with either candidate that that um, manager hires. So they're setting them up for success by screening that first. So that's an example of a skip level interview. And a cultural interview is an interview where you're looking to see, hey, is this person a fit to our culture or are they a culture ad? So these are questions that really get into, hey, these are the values that are most important inside of our organization. How do those values match to you and who you are? So those are different ways that you can conduct the interview with different purposes, right? Each of those interviews had a different purpose to it. One was initial screening. It wasn't going deep level, and that's your HR interview. The skip level interview is going completely deep level, and it's looking at the long-term viability of an individual inside of the organization. That third interview that we had talked about, um, which is the group interview, this group interview is going to bring everybody on the team. We're looking to say, hey, how is this person going to be a great member of our team? Do you know What does that look like from a skill set and a behavioral standpoint? And the culture interview, of course, says, hey, are our values aligned? And as we talked about last week, we were really digging into this alignment between personal values and organizational values, because as we know, folks leave organizations if they're not a cultural fit. So as we're conducting the interview, one of the things that we see happen so often that such a huge negative impact is the interview team or the interviewer will make promises that they cannot keep. Please do not do this. Do not make a promise that you cannot keep, okay? So, you know, this is also where some preparation comes into play. And sometimes ending an interview is scripted to essentially say, hey, you know, we've, we're interviewing X number of candidates. We're going to get back to you by X and we're going to have a decision by Y, right? Make sure your HR team is in the loop on this. There is nothing the worse than sitting in the HR seat and going, oh my gosh, why do these people keep calling me? Why couldn't the interview team have given them accurate results and communicated that same message to me so that we are on the same page as to what this is? And so that's something that's really important. And again, we want to bring a culture into our interview. Um, so, you know, if you have a culture of gratitude inside your organization, send a handwritten thank you note to your, your candidates that you interview in person after the fact. At the very least, ensure that your HR team and your HR systems have some sort of a response that lets folks know that they're not being considered for the role or that they are being considered for the role and the timeline as to what that is. So as we close out this um, short podcast on, you know, really conducting the interview. A couple key points that I want to make is one, you want to make that person feel incredibly comfortable in, in that interview process, because this is a two-way conversation. Point number two, as a key takeaway in conducting the interview, 
is know what your job is in the interview process. Are you interviewing for culture? Are you interviewing for skill set? Are you interviewing for the team? You know, what is your role within the interview and ensuring that that's calibrated with the rest of the team? The number three is don't make a promise you can't keep, right? When you're conducting the interview, ensure you're following through the way you say you're going to follow through with that candidate. So the key takeaway that we have for our executives listening in today is really to support the culture of creating strong interviews because that ripples back into the community. Um, You know, and I think the other thing with this is you set the tone for how others are talking about staff inside your organization. So if we're hiring for line level staff and you're talking negatively about it, it's going to ripple through every single person that interviews those line level staff and they're not going to take that as seriously. So, you know, when we look at what is the culture we're creating for executives listening in today, create the culture that every employee is valuable. And then the key takeaway for HR listeners today is to create your process and then build in the relationship piece inside of that process to best support your team. So that may look like, hey, you do have automated no thank you letters that go out. However, you also have checkpoints to ensure that the right things are going out. You have checkpoints with your team to ensure that they have what they need. And some of those handwritten notes are going out as well. And that doesn't all have to fall on you as the HR leader. So with that, I just want to thank you so much for listening in today as we talk about conducting the interview and the importance of that. And as you're hearing in this series is there are some amazing templates and tools and truly a process to make this entire foundational HR and bringing the right people in, solving significant people problems and significant profitability problems within these processes. And we have all of those laid out for you inside of our Hire and Inspire programs. Our next Hire program will start on July 11th, and we cannot wait for you to join us in that program. And of course, we have a standalone course that is also available for you, and that will be found within the show notes. So with that, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you back here next week. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Talent Optimization Podcast. You'll find more tools and resources for CEOs and HR professionals looking to bridge the strategies versus implementation gap of talent optimization at elevatedtalentconsulting.com. We've also created a free, valuable resource for you to begin bridging the gap called the Talent Optimization Foundation Membership Program. You can access it for free at elevatedtalentconsulting.com forward slash foundation. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode to learn more about talent optimization and creating a dream team for your organization.